Tilo was pop. <coughs> I'm going to edit that out. Tilo was pop. We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we happen to go live and you miss it, boom, right here. This is where it will be. Um, also, don't forget we got the Patreon, man. This is where we watch stuff that we can't watch on YouTube. Starting a few new shows already. And we also upload things that get blocked on YouTube to here. Such as that Gordon Ramsay goes to prison. I tried to do the fourth episode with the Beef Wellington. Blocked me. I disputed it. Still blocked me. So guess where it's going? Patreon. Sorry. And we also got the Discord, man. Uh, this is Police Interceptor, Season 23, Episode Finball. Let's get into it. This intro in the game, ain't it? Ask Foxtrot 05. I mean, right, you've got this uh, the wanted lad from the Volvo in an address. Did you just say Oscar Fox Zulu Zulu? Yeah, sure. Best. Stop dude. coming towards you. A suspected drug stealer who's been on the run for two years has been spotted by local cops in North Nottingham. Firearms officers Sergeant Ian Big E Coleman and Rob Ely are racing to the scene. So we're just going to go and uh, assist. I think the last uh, information we had is that they're talking to him through the window. He's got marks for violence and firearms. Two years is great. Fortunately, Big E's used to dealing with dangerous situations. Why did they call him Big E? Who gave him the nickname? Did he nickname himself Big E? What's going on here? P.P. Oh, pet P. Trick Jazz job before joining electrician. He's the operational firearms commander and was recently commended for his bravery when a suspect threatened his officers with a gun. Running forward at all, looks like he's pushing something. Local cops are struggling to get in, and it appears the bloke's trying to dispose of evidence. Have you got a uh, methadone check on board? Yeah, we've certainly got an enforcer. It sounds like he's uh, he's flushing drugs as we speak, so uh, we need to get in there as fast as we can. Yeah, by the time y'all get there, it's gone. They arrive on scene and prepare to make an entrance. Should have some gauntlets, shouldn't we? <laughs> The gloves are off and Big E's got the big red key. He's a rugby player who knows how to hit. Which one is it? But he may have met his match. It's a good door. With the suspect flushing drugs down the pan, every second counts. So local cops try a cruder method of entry. Imagine your name is Big E. And you come out with the red key, and you're an ex rugby player, and you can't get the door open. Yeah. I think cops are going through the window, mate. They're not fighting with him, are they? It's all kicking off. Yeah. Response cops have braved the broken glass and met with a violent suspect on the other side. Who they par the spray as the cavalry gathers. Someone got taser in there. Yeah. Come on. Rob's going in. Someone give me a boost, me foot. One of you going out in the front door. But the Parvard bad boy is in bracelets. We've got cuffs on, we're all right. Yeah, yeah cuffs on. Someone sprayed. <laughs> <laughs> the suspect's lived up to his violence marker. 
but after two years on the run, he's finally in cuffs. Stop. Uh, no messing about now, mate. All right, the game's over. Yeah? And he's left a mess in the bathroom. That's the box that he's taken with him. Right. So the reason we've had to get in so quick is because... I don't know what I thought this was of, uh, upon first look. It looked like a, a, one of them swings from Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know what was going on. Flushing drugs down the toilet, you can see all the empty containers on the floor. They'll need to conduct a thorough search of the property, but there's a problem. A 20 kilo canine gatekeeper with serious Ooh. teeth. Fortunately, the interceptors are prepared for all eventualities. Dog handler Coops arrives on scene. Close the door behind you. Do you want to walk past me? You're all right. You're all right with dogs, yeah? Just walk past it, great. Along with this specialist kit. Is this good lad? Yeah, where is he? Where you oh, where you got? Where you got? But the gatekeeper won't play ball. I know, it won't be funny, would it, if you come through there? Nothing's going to stop us at the end of the day searching this house. Um, no matter how nasty or... Y'all ever seen next Friday? You gotta get that man a brownie. Special brownie. Big the dogs are, we'll be here to sort it out. Um, and we will get what's in this property. So, uh, yeah. Let's hope his bark's worse than his bite. With Coop's dog sitting, the search team sets to work. It doesn't take long to see why this guy didn't come quietly. There's bags of weed, suspected heroin and MDMA. And there's a nasty surprise for the tooth fairy. What was under his pillow? Is it that there? Lovely knife there, look, which um, is not required for anything else but for protection. If he'd had time to arm himself, then the rook in the living room could have ended... Oh, yeah, buddy's going to jail. Without a doubt, you're going to jail, buddy. Very differently indeed. Yeah, he's got a lot to answer for. It's been a great team effort by local cops, the dog unit and the firearms team. Another one to lad off the streets. Cracking resort. Frustrating that he's got rid of a load of drugs. Another one to lad off the streets. Cracking resort. That's the best word of celebration that you could come up with? Cracking result. Cracking. Frustrating that he's got rid of a load of drugs before we've managed to get in and detain him, and, and quite clearly, I think a substantial amount of uh, what I reckon is probably Class A has gone down the toilet. But what can you do? There's still a... Oh, this is the UK. I'm surprised y'all not calling the plumber. ...significant stash that he didn't have time to flush due to the sharp entrance. So the boys head for a bite to eat to celebrate. But control... Has other ideas. Yeah, no problem. Um, we'll go back and clear it. Clear away. They're heading back to the property where there's been a shocking find. They found a blick? The Ferrero Rocher chocolate bar. Crunchy. I know they ain't find a blick. But he's definitely going to jail for about 15 years. They didn't found a gun, bladed article, class A, class B. Then you fought the police, like, yeah. It's over. I suggest you dye your hair back black before you get in there. He's got marks for violence and firearms. Uh... The interceptors are after a wanted man who's been on the run for two years. I reckon when he's fought on, it's like he's pushing something. He's holed up in a house with an indestructible front door. But local cops have done the window and pounced. The suspect's kicked off, got a face full of parva and been nicked. And they now know why he's put up such a fight. Plenty of Class A and Class B drugs. You're not supposed to have all of that in the crib anyway, man. That's, that's, what's that, like rule number two? Silly. Firearms officers Rob Ely and Sergeant Ian Coleman have left the scene, but there's an urgent request to return. Control room's just got hold of me. 
said that after we've left, the officers that have stayed at the address have obviously naturally done a search and have found what they suspect to be a firearm. So we've been asked to go back to go and have a look at it, um, see what we think, whether it's viable or not, and then we'll go from there. It seems the house full of drugs was a well-armed fortress. Not very often we come across conventional, viable handguns, but you never know. Let's see what let's go and see what we've got. This is crazy. The police see so little of guns that they have to call the police. The police got to call a special police to check it out. Hello. Hey, After another warm welcome. Bloody dogs. The boys inspect the firearms. So there's one there. Oh dear. Oh, you yeah, have multiple. And uh, I'll put my hand on that one. It feels, feels like it. They must be careful not to disturb any vital fingerprints. Forensic recovery, this, isn't it? Are you confident it's a firearm? I've picked that one up, and from the weight of it and the shape, yes. Yeah. That one, it, it's metal and heavy. I couldn't tell you any more than that. It looks like the real deal. Yeah, that's a revolver. I was just about to say that that got to be like a 38 or something. Yeah, definitely. This guy is an idiot. Whoever this is, like, you're dumb. There are three potential handguns. The telltale sign is that they're, they're wrapped up in socks and they're wrapped in other bags. So if we were talking about just like a, a, a BB gun or an air pistol, we, we find loads of them. They're not normally covered up like that. So if they've gone to that sort of trouble, it leads me to think that they might be proper viable pistols. So we don't want to miss any forensic opportunities by rushing in and trying to pull it apart now. Um, it's better for us to get Socko out in the morning. He got three pistols, class A, class B, fight with the police, which is, you're dumb. Do a proper job. All in, your, cover all in your home. Daylight. And there's another shocker in the room. Where's the taser? It is switched off. And he got a taser. Excellent. Okay. What a naughty boy. Yeah. A knife, a taser, guns, and a guard dog. The full house of horrors waiting for uninvited guests. Just goes to show the danger as well that the response cops put themselves under. You know, these guys, they're unarmed, they've come in looking, for, you know, thinking they're just coming for a wanted male, and they've gone into a dress with potentially two firearms. This situation could have gone a lot differently had that guy got himself in a position to arm himself with these. Not only will he potentially go to prison for his what he was wanted for, he's now got a, another a whole host of offences which he's going to be arrested for, and uh, this guy's in trouble. Probably going to be going away for a long time, hopefully. Yeah, he's going to at least 15 of them. From what the I three can... guns turned out to be viable revolvers. After an arrest, two. He's probably one of the one of the one of the goofies in the group. Hey, yeah, man, hold the pipes at your house. Hold the pipes, man. Oh, don't worry about it. Hold them. They ain't going. Two years in the making, the suspect pleaded guilty to three counts of possession of a firearm, possession with intent to supply Class A drugs, possession of ammunition, and a taser. He was sentenced to 12 and a half years at Her Majesty's pleasure. Yeah, definitely. I said 15, yeah, 12. He out of there, man. So everybody gonna serve, like six? You have a choice between saving one person. He knew he was gone. Put up his last little fight. A black Lexus thought to be involved in a cigarette theft in Skegness is being pursued by cops across the border in Lincolnshire. Officers Lewis Marshall and Lisa DeSantis are racing to intercept. It's believed to be a cloned vehicle heading from Skegness towards uh, the Nottinghamshire border. So we're liaising with Lynx officers because um, I think some of them have actually been behind the vehicle 
but they've not been in a position to be able to deal with it. Not's friendly neighbourhood interceptors are very much in a position to deal with it. Chalky and Paul Charlesworth are already bound for the border, aiming to stick a bed of nails in the path of the Lexus. Hopefully, they're trying to lay out those spikes. If we sting it, that's going to be able to control it, slow it for us to be able to deal with it. Lisa's T hey, Lisa. taser and firearms trained, but it's her advanced driving skills being put to the test tonight. Can't Lisa fight too? Ain't she like an MMA fighter? Or like a black belt or something? God, this rain is awful. As the locals might say, it's silent it down. And it's slow progress for Lisa and Lewis. Middle of the road job this is. And I have to put it up. Jesus. He can't help, but Paul might. He's at the border bridge with a loaded stinger as Chalky, on lookout, spots the Lexus heading this way. Welcome to Nottinghamshire. He's stung been it. stung. He was going fast too. The baton passes to Knox Sarge, Lenny Bennett, who's on the stung Lexus like wasps on jam. Knox, Knox, you need to entering village of Dunham. Doesn't appear to have been stung. The tyres will slowly deflate along with any chance of escape. So y'all, I asked this last time, so y'all don't got fix a flat out there. With a pop tire, you can go for like 50 miles with fix a flat because it puts the phone. The RA remains low. Speed is five zero. It's now just a matter of time. Yeah, both front tires have gone. I think it's on the rims. Uh, it's slowing four zero now. It's down to three zero. Uh, I'm surprised it can't come in. There's four occupants in the car, and if they're thinking of running, they'll get a nasty surprise. They got a dog. I think you've got a little dog with you. Lincolnshire still has a dog in this fight. Honestly, at this point, I'm taking my chances. There's four of us, one dog. Gone. It's T-Pack time. Chalky and Paul have caught up with the pursuit and moved to the front, forcing the Lexus to stop. Box on, box on while Lisa and Lewis miss the party by a heartbeat. Uh. After a brief tango with Team T-Pack, the occupants are face down on the dance floor. They made the truck. <laughs> they was like, nah, we caught, it's over. Oh, yeah, they're really chilling. I'm a South Yorkshire Chavers! Yeah. The driver claims to own the car. It is my car, I can show you the logbook and the proof of everything. I mean, it is actually my car. However, he's not insured and disqualified from driving. The Lincolnshire cops also suspected the car of being involved in a cigarette theft. But there's no sign of any smokes. Cigarette theft? What year are we in? Who's still in cigarettes? Have you seen oh, it? Where is it? It's just crisps and pop. You're both. What do you mean? What are you on about? <laughs> you just about to stop the police like a plank, can't yeah. you? Well, why, 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 you've just done, why, you've done why, what you've done, why, haven't why? you? Right, so I ain't got nothing. Don't tell me what we haven't, haven't got, all right, OK? There might be no evidence of cigarette theft, but he's driven dangerously and failed to stop in two counties. And why, why, why are there number plates in the boot? Just run some plates through, please, in the boot of this vehicle. <laughs> the reg comes back to the Lexus, meaning it's also on false plates. And that's why you're all nicked. Where's the uh, transport coming from? Link. Skeggy. Where's the... Uh... 
Definitely ruined his Stone Island shirt. Transport coming from Link. Skeggy. The Link span to transport them is about an hour away. An hour on the roadside? In the rain? Time enough to get to know each other. Which oh, I bet you love this yard, don't you? I'll pay my taxes, me. So do oh, I. Man. So do I. Yeah, and I'll pay to pay you. Thank so why you. Are you. Arresting me. Thank you. Your... You broke the law, buddy. But I'll pay you, really. Thanks. I'll, I'll pay your wages. A classic hit from the cliche album. <laughs> you piggy bastard. <laughs> That's original. That is really original. Sergeant Lenny joins the waiting party. We're going to Lincoln Nick. Yeah, uh, probably don't know. Back that way. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen. What's it called now? Phil Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. I think they don't think out will come of it. They just don't care. They're playing up to the cameras and uh, the circumstances, but not the most remotely phased by having their car stunned, being pursued across. I think it's probably 45 miles uh, from Skegness to where we are now, into Nottinghamshire, across Lincolnshire, and they're from South Yorkshire. Uh, not bothered, I don't care. I think it's uh, brilliant, don't they? We got your bars, boys. S70, put that Yo. on the map. I'm sorry, Dad, and I'm sorry, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Mother's pride also boasts he could outrun the dog. Did you reckon you can outrun the lunch, right? Yeah. Good luck. Well, I'd outrun the anyway if I did. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy in handcuffs after outrunning no one. Hey, low key, some dogs will get outran. Don't don't get it twisted. It's rare. It's, it, it happens a lot here. We got some fast people out here. I know y'all got some fast humans out there too. S70, Barnsley. Just time to make sure the cuffs are a snug fit. That's tight. With the Yorkshire puddings off to the nick, there's just time for a quick post-match banter analysis. Why well, you call them Yorkshire puddings? We hear some bad banter at work sometimes. Yeah. Well, that was that was a that lot was worse. low level. If, I mean, if I had a pound for every time someone says they pay my wages, I wouldn't need to work. Um, it's just so boring. The driver of the if I had a pound for every time somebody said if I had a pound, pants pants gang was convicted of driving whilst disqualified, failed to stop, no insurance and fraudulent use of registration plates. Mm. He lost his license for three and a half years and got 14 months inside. Enough time to hone his banter. No further action was taken against the passengers and the investigation of the cigarette theft continues. Still to come, expected dealer and seven months in jail. Shop the rooms to go Memorial Day sale. That's a long time, man. Shout out to the first First responders, by the way, man. Don't think I ain't forget y'all. I know y'all in here hitting the like button and making it happen, man. Unlike some of y'all who just not hitting the like button for some odd reason. I don't know. It's estimated that Nottinghamshire has the highest amount of crack cocaine and opiate users in the East Midlands. Police! Police officers! And disrupting the supply lines... Business. ...is a top priority for the interceptors. Like a little production factory thing in here, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's the bane of most communities. I'm sure if you ask most people, um, There'd be nothing worse than living next door to or on the estate with active drug dealers because it brings a lot of other criminal elements into the area. I think for every drug dealer we take off the streets, uh, it's a massive win for us. Tasked with taking down suspected dealers today is the Knife Crime Unit, including Gav Hall and Joe Riley, who are in an area plagued by drugs. We're in the city south area of Nottingham today, which is the Meadows. Just out on patrol, we've got a few cars out. We've had a good briefing pack. We've got a few faces, a few vehicles to look out for. It's 
been some groups carrying machetes and threatening rival groups all over drugs. Drug dealing and weapons often go hand in hand. It's one of those things that the drug dealers want to protect what they've got. Obviously, we've got rival gangs trying to take over turf, enforcing areas. Knives, weapons are used to do that. OK, I'm glad they put him up. I was going to ask, is he new? Four years, yep, that's still new. Joe's relatively new to the force, and the only thing he dislikes more than vegetables are drug dealers. And if customers looking for a fix are anything to go by, they're close. So I'm waiting in the other way there. To get a good look at him? No. Just all grey, probably a user. Ah, oh, I'll spin it then. Just uh, chat fanning up. There's six members of the knife crime team out and about. Key to a successful operation is coordinating the rest of the team. Tip four. We've just got a user waiting in an alleyway in the meadows, that's all. Where there's demand, there's usually supply. But this suspected user is on the move. He's there. Yeah, he's, he's, moved away. Off. he's moved off. Meadows Way. That user's moved off now. He's gone in towards Meadows Way, so we don't know if he's been served up or he's been told to move. The Meadows is a maze of paths and alleyways, so the odds favour the bad guys. To level the playing field, the boys change their mode of transport. Right, let me just dump this car here then. Definitely get on bicycles. What's that for to do? We're just on uh, Arkwright Walk near um, the Bridgeway Centre, so we'll get out on foot here and go towards the park. Oh, you can't walk. A suspected dealer has been spotted by Dan Mottishaw waiting in a nearby alleyway. What was the lad with the bushy hair wearing? And the Meadows morning rush hour is beginning. Oh, mate, there's five more coming here. There's about five more users coming into the Meadows now. The clock has got a red baseball cap on. The interceptors believe these are users heading to their target. They've potentially been dealt to by a, a young lad with bushy hair. So we're just waiting for these drug users to go into the area as well. This suspected dealer was only arrested last week with a 12-inch knife, but no drugs. This time, they hope to catch him in the act as potential users flood the area. The block is... The block is... They got that block jumping. That's crazy. They're everywhere now. General direction towards Tushans. The rest of the team's in place with Ooh. eyes on the lad with the bushy hair. They just spawned out of nowhere. He's approaching the group now. Bushy's on the move. Shall I get out here in case one's this way? The suspected dealer's been spotted making what looks like an exchange. Joe and Gav race to intercept. Get in there. The suspects legged it, but the team are in hot pursuit. Yeah, he's gone right, right towards the uh, away from the group. It looks like he's homeward bound. Yeah, he's gone straight. He's going back towards the same address. Not if the knife crime team have anything to say about it. They got him. One detained. <laughs> the lad with the bushy hair has been caught red-handed. You say he's got a bundle? Yeah, yeah, we've got him. Load of class A that... There's a lot of things in this world happening right now, and consumers like... That's messed up, because none of his little customers told him that they seen the police car. I mean, it depends on what side of the law you're on. I'm not condoning this or, you know what I'm saying, glorifying it or anything of that nature. I'm just saying. The team, including Dan Mottishore and Ken Tinley, have wrestled the suspect to the floor and discovered what looks like crack cocaine and heroin in his pants. Joe arrives on scene. He had a 12-inch kitchen knife, probably blast time. Yeah, that's what I'm keeping down. I haven't got nothing, so probably... Well, well, we need to find out, don't we? I haven't got nothing. We need to find that out, don't we? He had any charges last time, yeah. 
Yeah, it's not going on Sound. Right. He's been caught before with a large knife, so they're not taking any chances. Right on your side. Bring your legs forward. Bring your legs forward. Bring your legs up so you can stand yourself up. I can't. In a bid to escape, it seems he's lost his trainers. I was literally about to ask, like, did he run outside beer? I'm not going to run off. Yeah, two shots. Just, just chill. <laughs> and they're not the only thing he's missing. Definitely some cash got dropped on the route. What, what Can we walk there? there? No, mate, not a minute. We're staying here for a sec. Can I have my shoes then? Where are we? We find them, mate, yeah. This cop's looking for them. Can you take me to the car? The lad's worried about his trainers, but he should be more concerned with the Class A's... Yeah, you going to jail, buddy. ...burner phone and cash they found... All I'm hearing is the phone jumping. That line is going crazy. On him. Result. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Right, Make sure there's no weapon as well. It's had a good search, but yeah. It's a great result, and the boys think there might be more drugs at his house. Mate, let's bring the car around here, because if he gets anywhere near Home Address, he's going to be your pick. Yeah, 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 absolutely. They're concerned the suspect might try to alert the occupants, and it seems their fears are well-founded. Yo! No, don't start shouting. Don't no, start shouting. Yo! Fam! Go, bro. Quick, then. Go. Oh. Can't even see. He's trying to message some, get a message across to somebody called. He's obviously trying to tip her off for a search. He's already just let somebody else know. Gabs onto the messenger. Yo, tell my people that I've been alive. This way, buddy. Hey, yo. This way. While Joe moves to shut the suspect up. Look, you didn't get two probes on you. Got two what? Probes. Tasered. Oh. The suspect's off to the nick, and it's class A jackpot for the cops. This is in excess of 50 wraps. The £10 a wrap, £500 worth of class A drugs off the streets. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite a significant deal. That we, we've known him for a long time. Um, so. At some point, man, when you get bagged by the police, man, you're going to have to retire, man. You're forever on their radar. Oh, it, it's a good name. He's obviously tried letting somebody know then that he's been arrested. So we're trying to figure out who this female is, whose name he's been shouting, see if we can find her address. The team need to locate the address urgently before any evidence can be destroyed. The messenger is tight-lipped. But intel comes through on the address. It makes perfect sense that he's reloading from this address, or dealing from this address, just by the proximity, you know, from where he's been seen serving them up. The woman the suspect was apparently trying to get a message to is also confirmed to be at the property. Time for a knock. Hey, Hello. you're right. Gav soon spots evidence of dealing. Freezer bags here, it's probably what he's wrapping his drugs in. Doing his prep work. There's more than just prep work in the room. Oh, beautiful. Cash. There's his takens from dealing drugs. The occupants of the house are arrested. <laughs> and heading straight downtown. No comment! So All the way. Back in the bedroom, the evidence continues to mount. Heroin. Just uh, make sure you go through all the... What is this? A is this a... Did I, is this... Are they even living here or is this just a trap? Like, why, is, why do these dealers have their whole supply in their crib knowing that if they get caught, the police is going to go to their house? Why? Why, why, why? The rubbish in the bins, because uh, there's discarded heroin deals all in the bins here. Meanwhile, Joe's had a route around outside, and it's not gardening tools he spotted. Just down here, hidden away, is what we've got. It's so hidden under some bag swords. Large knife in the garden. Zed. Very dangerous weapon. It's, um, yeah, obviously used by the drug dealers in case he needed it. There's no excuse for having one of these on you at all. They're, they're used for nothing else other than violence and...
I heard there was foxes out there. I don't want to get bit by a fox. That's for the use. Uh, cause an injury to people. It's not something that we need walking around the streets in, in Nottingham. So that's another one off the street. They might not be able to link the knife to the suspected dealer, but with the drugs found on him and the evidence in the house, it's been a cracking effort from the team. You're going to get about seven, seven years maybe. This has been a really, really good result because we, we do struggle in the meadows with our tactics. Most of the drug dealing is done on foot. People come out, the dealers come out with just a little at a time to serve up. But today we've taken out one of the most prominent drug dealers in the meadows and he's come out with a big bundle of drugs and we found where he's come from and we've got more drugs here and we've got cash so it's been a really really good result yo you ready for the big game of course i'm ready it's the finals why do you keep asking if i'm ready the lad with the bushy hair pleaded guilty to two counts of possession with intent to supply a class a drug he now awaits his sentence. The two occupants of the house were released with no further action. She was no comment all the way, bro. I can't even. Historically, drug driving has been difficult to prove. All right, there's drunk smell of weed in the car. Is any on you? Not with him, the Nose McGee, whatever his name is. However, the latest annual figures in England and Wales show over 12,000 motorists were found guilty of driving under the influence of drugs. And you should move your tongue around your mouth about 10 times. That's it. You've done this one Pause. before. Thanks largely. Thank you very much. To the introduction of the drugs wipe. It's come up as positive for cannabis, suspicion driving this vehicle. I would say drug driving at the moment is akin to what perhaps drink driving was in the uh, early 90s. People wouldn't consider having a few beers and going and driving, but a lot of people like regular cannabis users, mm. uh, weed smokers, everywhere. would think nothing of having a spliff and then a couple of hours later uh, driving. But we do a drug wipe on that, and even if it's a few hours later, they'll still fail because they've still got the drugs in the system. It's been a quiet shift for Phil Broughton, but that could be about to change as a passing Ford catches his eye. Well, then you guys have had any excitement today? Not yet, no. Just uh, spinning on a uh, focus. Yeah, no worries. I'll let you do it. Although Phil's in the unmarked BMW, the driver seems to have clocked him and floored it. But Phil soon got him back in his sights. Time to find out what the big hurry's about. Hey, all. Hey, right. Is it your vehicle? It is, yeah. It's all right. It's just it looked like it, you saw me turn around and then you sort of booted it up here. So I just uh, want to make sure you weren't trying to get away no, from me. Getting to my mates before they go to work. Ah, no worries. Have you got your license anything on you? I don't know. No. Is it all written in your name? It is, yeah. Just take something back of that car. No, it's just how it, it, it just looked. When I turned it round, you sort of then shot off up the hill and then... Phil's been in the game long enough to know when a car boots it off like that, there's usually something amiss. The reason for joining to lock up bad guys. Famous movie, The Terminator. So this is a try-hard. Vehicle, they shouldn't be. Uh, no. That all depends. Do iffy smells count? Why am I getting a whiff of weed? Be honest with me. Uh, I did have a smell yesterday. So. Right. That car stinks of it. So it's not just one day, is it? Do we use it regularly? I do, yeah. Is there any on you? No. Any in the vehicle? No. It's estimated smoking just one joint can leave you over the prescribed limit for driving 12 hours later. When was the last time you smoked? What's the prescribed limit? 
yesterday. Yesterday. And you say you just smoke it regularly. Is it? Yeah. Is it like every day? Yeah, but I have one every night. Right. Yeah. What's your reason for smoking that then? No, it just helps me sleep. It might help the lad doze off, but that's not ideal at the wheel of a car. I'm going to run through the drink and drug drive procedure with you. So the first thing's first is I'm going to require you to provide me a specimen and a breath. So deep breath in and blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you very much, that's enough. Let's analyse your breath sample now, which has come back as zero. The driver might be stone cold sober, but is he stoned? So the next one is I'm going to require you to provide a sample of saliva for a drugs test. Lean forward for me and I want you to stick your tongue out. And what I'm going to do, as far as you can, tongue-wise, and I'm going to take a swab of each side of your tongue. That's it. And then I'm just going to check to make sure there's enough saliva on it. OK. Right, that takes about eight minutes to process. Swabbing my tongue will make me feel uncomfortable. You feel me? Like, I just don't... Just enough time for a quick search. Oh, potentially going to be searching you and the vehicle. Am I likely to find any in the vehicle? Uh, probably not. You say probably not? Probably not that I'm aware of. Right. Not exactly convincing. Oh, uh, what have you got in your pockets? Um, survival blankets. Survival blankets? <laughs> yeah, we walk dog a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> in Kirby? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just stand here for us, then. Keep it stand there for us. Aside from the lad's Kirkby survival kit. No worries, take a seat back in there then. He's clean, which is more than can be said for his car. I'd be uncomfortable in people's car when it's dirty like this. Hey, sir. Something gonna crawl on me or something. Proper mess, this is. Don't attempt anything without the gloves. Amongst the cutlery, Phil spots a container. It doesn't look like the lad's lunchbox. Busted. So what we found here was just a small box, uh, and inside it was some cannabis. So uh, what we're doing now is take it back, see who it belongs to. Uh, if it belongs to him, then uh, obviously we'll be dealing with that as well. Smoking weed can affect the memory, and Phil jogs the suspects as to his find. Uh, that was behind the driver's seat. Who does that belong to? That's mine. That's yours, is it? And inside it is some uh, cannabis. Who does that belong to? That's mine. That's yours, is it? In this case, it's finders keepers and Phil will seize the weed. One last item on the agenda. OK, then, right. Let's have a look at these, uh, this result. Uh, OK, right. Uh, it's gone through a cycle and it's, uh, it's recorded a positive result for cannabis. So it's moment in time I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving this motor vehicle whilst over the specified limit for cannabis. I'm also arresting you on suspicion of possessing a controlled drug believed to be cannabis. So you don't have to say anything. We may help me defence. You're not mentioned when questioned. Somebody's later lying in court. Anything you say may be given evidence. For drug driving and possession of a Class B drug, the lad was fined 200. I'm so glad I don't smoke, man. They pulled me over. I'm, yeah, go ahead. Search away. You ain't gonna find a, a crumb. And 80 pounds and disqualified for driving for 12 months. Still to come. 90% of signs of aging are caused by the... We're brothers. this neck of the woods in case it um, pops up here. It's bright and early in Mansfield. And the sun shines on the righteous. Lisa and Bruce are on the hunt for a suspected cloned car. We've got a blue Vito van. Um, it keeps pinging our AMPR cameras and it has been doing for the last few weeks and it's possibly on clone plates. The rogue Vito van needs following up. False plates are typically used by bad guys looking to disguise dodgy doings. Sometimes it's because they want to avoid playing. They're out here trying to disguise dodgy doings. Pay 
paying insurance and they just want to go around on an insured vehicle. It could be a stolen vehicle. Is... Oh. The search for the blue veto is over. It's just past us on the um, Southall Road. Suspects using cloned plates have a nasty habit of making off, so other units are on their way. We're about to see the cars, I'm um, just thinking about when we stop it. Yeah, we see. Shall I speak to him? Yeah, but. Uh... Mate, we just need to speak to you about your van. Do you know when we get through the lights? Yeah. Can you just take a left and just pull somewhere? Pull somewhere. Point yeah, just. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on then. Yeah. yeah. Van man seems on the level. Yeah, it's the other mobiles. Um, it's just pulling into the um, SR petrol station. Um, I think it's all going to be okay. Lisa calls off the cavalry and comes straight to the point. We've got reports that this vehicle might be on clone plates. I don't know if you've been stopped recently. So what we just need to do is check everything's all in order. Um, it, might one, two, it might just be a... Not clone plates. I'm waiting for a new plate to come for the front. So what... Like page the original the, uh, Yeah. But that one got bricked on. I the new plate. The man claims the back plate is correct, but he's aware his front one isn't. It's that one. He's apparently registering for a Volkswagen Golf. All oh, right. What's the date of it? Have you got any ID on you at all? And H, just to confirm, on the front of the vehicle, you've got Foxtrot Echo 07, and then on the rear, you've got Foxtrot Echo 57. Close, but no cigar. They're not even the same colour. Does the colour matter? Ah, oh, the front and rear plates differ by one number. So why have you got two different plates on then? That got ripped off. Yeah, it will do. I went through a big puddle and it pulled it off, so we ordered a new one. Yeah. From online. Yeah. And came through as that. But obviously you're driving around aware that you've got a, a number plate that belongs to another vehicle on your car. So oh, why like, have you got it on? Because I didn't know you are allowed to drive without one. But, but you've got mean? a false number plate on. <laughs> That's like me putting your registration numbers on my car and then driving around because I didn't realise it was illegal. She's like halfway decent. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm trying to, like, if she didn't look like she was angry all the time, like, I'm... Lisa has his number and she's not impressed. You could get speeding tickets, you could be involved in stuff, and you're using someone else. You know, this person could get stuff through their post. It's not rocket science. I'm sure the person that owns the car to this number plate won't be very pleased that you're driving around with their number plate on. It seems he's a bit of a plonker, not an arch criminal, and he's got an idea. Take it off. Go yeah, are you understanding though that what you're doing, you can't go around with another number plate belonging to another vehicle on your vehicle? Bruce points out a convenient solution. You can buy a new number plate over there. But Billy Two Plates isn't off the hook. You've been driving it as we've stopped you, yeah. so you know that it belongs to a golf but you're still continuing to drive with it round. So you do know, but you just choose to drive around with it, all right? So there's offences there, isn't they? It's an unusual situation, and Lisa and Bruce need to refer to the rule book to see the exact offence. Just having a look, really. I've got them all here. While Bruce wades through number plate misdemeanours... Fair to display front registration plate. It is, but it's the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> The man gets to work on fixing the problem. Uh, fail to display your vehicle licence in a manner. No, it's not that. So we just need to make sure that you're reported for the correct offence. It's much easier if you just cloned your vehicle because we know, you know, so just bear with us while we look at that and then we'll let you get on your way. Here you go. Bingo. They now know what they're nicking him for. I'll, I'll get the offence code for you. Yeah. There's a first time for everything. Take it away, Lisa. So, at this time, you will be reported for consideration of the question of prosecuting you for the relevant offence, which is displaying the incorrect vehicle registration mark on the front of your vehicle, all right? So, yeah. you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention now, something which you later rely on in court, and if you do say, maybe you'll have a bit, do you understand? Yeah. If you can't get that sorted now, then I'd suggest you go straight home, all right? OK. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. How? I just got a ticket. How am I supposed to enjoy the rest of my day?
The two plate plonker was reported for failing to display the correct registration and awaits his day in court. For Lisa, it's been a waste of their resources. When we're dealing with clone plates on cars, it's generally for your big time criminals, you know, stolen vehicles, you know, big crime that's well, out. He went and got it fixed right away. Yeah. So when you deal with guys like this, initially we've got all our cars coming from the county, potentially thinking that this car may fail to stop. It might contain dangerous individuals. It might contain criminals. So it, it's kind of a waste of time for us because it's dragging all our resources to one Y'all could have let him go. Um, when actually it's just a guy that couldn't be bothered to change. Oh, she always look angry because her eyebrows are drew. Are they drew? The number plate he'd bought, um, knowing it was wrong. It's just bizarre. Tell y'all leave a like, comment, and subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's go.